People around the world have been fawning over all the pictures and data that the James Webb Telescope has been sending back. But as the popularity of the telescope's mission grew, people noticed some questionable things about the person it's named after. Apparently, the former NASA Administrator James Webb has a homophobic past. Keep watching this video to find out exactly what's got people up in arms about the JWST. First, let's talk about the homophobic policies enforced by James Webb. The JWST is named after James Webb, who worked as the second NASA administrator from 1961 to 1968. He oversaw NASA through what most people see as its biggest achievement, the Apollo missions, which let the agency be the first to send a man to the moon. While Webb retired from his post a year before Apollo 11, he's still considered to be the one who set the foundations that made that mission possible, but his achievements are overshadowed by his role in enforcing discriminatory policies against LGBTQ plus government workers as part of the Lavender Scare. Even before the launch, people tried to get NASA to choose a different name. For instance, Shonda Prescott Weinstein, a physicist at the University of New Hampshire, warned that the history behind James Webb could cast a heavy shadow over the entire mission. Along with three colleagues, she wrote in Scientific American in March last year, saying that it was unfortunate that NASA is planning planning to launch this amazing instrument with the name of a person whose legacy is at best complicated and at worst actively complicit in homophobic discrimination at the federal government level. Even after the launch, people voiced their concerns. Astronomer Phil Plate, in his Bad Astronomy newsletter, wrote that a lot of astronomers are unhappy that this new telescope is named after Webb. He said that it was difficult to want to use an instrument, even something as incredible as JWST, when you know you'll have to refer to it by invoking the name of someone who worked to negate your very existence. Later, he tweeted about the subject as well. Plate said that JWST will give us gorgeous images and amazing science, but that it's named after someone irrevocably tied to bigotry and homophobia. At a time when the whole country is confronting how we commemorate the past, this is an important discussion to be had. After the death of George Floyd, Congress told the Defense Department that it had three three years to rename 10 military bases that are named after Confederate leaders. If JWST becomes a household name like Hubble, people are worried that we'll be honoring a controversial figure like James Webb. Prescott Weinstein spoke to the Washington Post about James Webb's legacy and the impact that JWST sharing his name will have. She said that children are going to grow up with this name on their lips and that it's going to define astronomy for a generation. That's why researchers want the name changed. A petition for the renaming of the JWST has already gotten more than 1,700 signatures from prominent figures in the scientific community. Next, NASA responded to the controversy. Despite all the outcry, in the end, NASA decided to keep the James Webb name. The agency said it had conducted an internal investigation, pouring through extensive archives about James Webb and his time at NASA, and it hadn't found enough evidence to claim that Webb was directly involved in enforcing these policies. Critics have said that even if there isn't enough evidence of his involvement, at the very least he's complicit. They argue that since Webb was in a position of power at NASA and he allowed these policies to continue, he's indirectly endorsing what they stand for. But as it turns out, there is in fact a lot of evidence. The National Archives, for example, show that Webb received a memo that spoke extensively about the problem of homosexuals and sex perverts in the Department of State. Records also show that Webb actually forwarded this memo to a sitting senator in 1950. Another incident is when NASA took part in an inquiry by the Senate, which concluded that LGBTQ plus people were not suited for government roles and that they were security risks. Finally, a documentary was made to encourage NASA to rename the JWST. Katrina Jackson, working at the nonprofit Just Space Alliance, made a 41-minute documentary called behind the name, then explored how NASA names its missions, James Webb's history, and the mounting pressure from the scientific community to rename the JWST. The documentary quotes a lot of evidence that was published in a report in Nature, citing 400 pages of internal NASA documents obtained through a Freedom of Information Act request. These pages included a white paper that stated that NASA had decided to remove homosexual employees as a policy. The white paper also admitted 
admitted that while Webb was administrator, he had the opportunity to remove or change this policy, which he didn't. Both the movie and the report also focus on a lawsuit filed by an ex-NASA employee over wrongful dismissal. According to the suit, in 1963, NASA employee Clifford Norton was spotted in a car with another man and was then arrested. After that, NASA's security took Norton to headquarters and interrogated him all night. Norton alleged that he was told that it was a custom at NASA to fire people for homosexual conduct. Later, an appeals court ruled in his favor, and he won the suit. The report in Nature notes that NASA had looked at the details of this lawsuit during their 2021 internal investigation, so they did have proof of discriminatory actions by the agency during Webb's tenure, but they decided it wasn't enough. The documentary states that while discrimination against LGBTQ plus people was common in the 1960s, NASA willingly enacted such a policy. It says that changing the name of what is the most powerful telescope since Hubble would send a very strong message that NASA doesn't tolerate that type of behavior any longer. In other related news, China might be shifting to reusable rockets. New plans have surfaced that suggest China might be planning to build a fully reusable version of its Long March 9 super heavy lift rocket. The Long March 9 was only approved last year, which is planned to be put into use by 2030, in time for Chinese mega projects in space, such as the International Lunar Research Station. Apparently, this is going to be a massive rocket with three stages accompanied by four side boosters. But now, it seems China might be moving into the fully reusable rocket space, maybe to compete with SpaceX's Starship program. In a new lecture presented by a chief designer of the Long March rockets, Long Le Hao, a concept for a new two-stage reusable rocket was shown for the first time. And while the Long March 9 has a reusable first stage, for this design, both stages would be reusable. When completed, the rocket would be capable of carrying a payload weighing as much as 150 tons to low Earth orbit and 50 tons for translunar injection. Long revealed that the reusable version was planned for 2035, and work on the original Long March 9 would continue in parallel with the new model. Next up, Russia has threatened the European Space Agency. After the European Space Agency ended all collaboration with Russia on the ExoMars mission because of sanctions over Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the country threatened to stop the use of a European robotic arm on the International Space Station. While the ESA had suspended cooperation with the Russian space agency Roscosmos all the way back in March, ESA Director General Joseph Oshbacher announced that this new announcement meant that it was unlikely the ESA would ever work with Roscosmos again. The head of Roscosmos, Dmitry Rogozin, reacted very strongly to this announcement. He went on Telegram to accuse the ESA of sabotaging the joint ExoMars mission. He also said that Russia would take back the Kazachok landing platform that it had given to the ESA. He also gave an order to all cosmonauts stationed on the International Space Station to stop using a European robotic arm that's part of the Nauka module. This would mean that a joint spacewalk by a Russian cosmonaut and ESA astronaut to work on the robotic arm would not be taking place as scheduled. Finally, Draper has won a NASA contract for a moon lander mission. On July 21st, NASA announced that it had awarded a contract to Draper to transport three instruments to the far side of the moon. The mission is planned for 2025, and it'll be landing at the Schrodinger Basin. The $73 million contract is for the use of Draper's Series 2 lander from its Commercial Lunar Payload Services program to carry out experiments on the moon using these scientific instruments. These missions will mainly be measuring heat flow and electrical conductivity of the lunar subsurface, collecting seismic data, and measuring the interaction of the solar wind with the lunar surface. While this is the eighth contract awarded to the Commercial Lunar Payload Services program, it's the first one that's going to the far side of the moon. The only other successful mission to the far side was China's Shang'e 4, which carried the U-2-2 rover to the Von Karman crater back in 2019. So there's a lot riding on this mission. That's a wrap for this video. Do you think NASA should rename the James Webb Telescope? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.